so let me just uh, kick start the today's session so today like we are going to discuss about the test design so in yesterday session like i have pretty much i have highlighted about the scrum process in which like we will be having the planning call so in a planning call so we will be finalizing the user story so let's say like we are finalizing total of eight user story and we need to complete the development as well as testing activity within the end of the sprint so which means like we will be having the duration of 15 days and within 15 days so like the developer should complete the development activities at the same time for the respective user story so we should complete the testing activity okay and how the process is going to work so let's assume like it's a day one of the sprint so in the day one of the sprint obviously so the developers are going to split the user story among them and they are going to focus upon the development activity and while they are developing the respective user story so what the qa team is going to do so are we going to sit idle so that's not the case right so pretty much like we will be focusing on the test design okay so what is mean by test design so test design is nothing but so deriving all possible scenarios so we need to read the user story so which is nothing but we need to understand the requirement and post understanding the requirement so we should derive all possible scenarios okay so all possible scenarios in the sense so let me just take an example of an login page okay so let me just take one of the login page so let me open the uh, salesforce so the developer is going to develop the login page and once they complete the development activities we need to check the functionality so in order to uh, check the functionality so we are going to derive all the possible scenarios so all possible scenarios in the sense so what are the uh, different scenarios we can derive in the sense so basically like we focus upon two things so one we call it as an ui validation so ui validation is nothing but we call it as an look and feel so how the application should look and uh, look like so we can say we can validate the label name we can validate the color font etc and secondary like we are going to validate the functionality so these are the two things like we are going to focus upon we are going to focus upon the ui validation as well as like we are going to focus upon the functionality of an particular user story when we say ui validation so in this login page so what are the ui validation we can consider in the sense so we can check the presence of logo and before each and every text box like we are having some label name so like the logo the label name so these we call it as an ui validation so we are going to focus upon the ui validation and secondary not secondary so primarily we should focus upon the functionality of an application secondary like we need to focus upon the ui validation so when we take the functionality so functionality is nothing but so we call it as an working behavior okay so how the specific thing should work so let's take a a different functionality so let me just verify the functionality of this username text box so when we check this functionality of an username text box like the user can inject the alphabets so whatever the alphabets we need we can able to inject so we can inject the numerical value we may inject the special character so the functionality of the <coughs> sorry so the functionality of the username text box is like so it will accept the input from the user and the input can be either the special character or the numerical value or even like we can inject the characters and it will accept, accept both uppercase as well as the lowercase so in the requirement document so the business analyst will specified 
so how the username text box should work like so in order to verify that like we are going to add one scenario to check the respective functionality so this is the first scenario we are deriving so like that we need to derive all possible scenarios so secondary what we can do we can check the password text box so when we are verifying the password text box so what are the things like we are going to consider so obviously right we are going to uh, inject the alphabets uh, numerical value and then like we are going to inject a special character etc but whenever we type the password so you could see it is encrypting the password so the functional validation here is like so whenever the user inject the appropriate data it should be encrypted so in a user story the business analyst may highlighted so that is the reason the developer is going to develop in the way so whenever someone enters something in the password text box it should be encrypted so this is one one more possible scenarios so likewise so we need to derive all possible scenarios so what are the other possible scenarios we can derive so we can check on the login validation so login validation in the sense so whenever we enter the valid username and valid password we can verify so whether it is navigating to the home page or not and whenever like the user enter the invalid credential so we can verify the error message so even the business analyst will specify the expected error message in the requirement so which is nothing but they will be specifying in the user story so likewise we need to derive all possible scenario so related to the login page and if we need to cover furthermore scenario so what are the other scenarios we can include so like uh, here we could say like uh, there is an option called as an forget your password so whenever so the user forget the password so they should be able to reset the password okay so with this link so this is again a functionality and then other functionality so let's say if the user stays idle in the login page so like whenever we don't perform any action in the particular web page what happens some time out pop up will throw so like it there was some warning will be throw so do you want to stay in this page like by some uh, warning will be throw so we can verify the warning and uh, consider like here we are having the remember me option so while doing the login if i select the remember me option and when i try to log in for the second time so my username and password should be auto saved in the appropriate browser so these are the functional check so we are going to verify the functionality of an application so in order to verify the functionality so in a respective user story we will be deriving all possible scenarios so which we call it as a test case okay so the role of the qa so the initial role of the qa is like so whenever the developer develops the application so we need to understand the user story and we need to derive all possible scenarios so the process of deriving all possible scenarios so we call it as a test design and in a real time so the test design can be done in a two way so either we we can follow the traditional approach so the traditional approach in the sense like we will be using the excel sheet and with the help of the excel sheet so we are going to derive all possible scenarios or else like nowadays majoritarily so they are uh, focusing upon the modern approach so where we are going to learn about the bdd so bdd is nothing but behavior driven development so in upcoming session so like we are going to learn technically so how we are going to write the test design which is nothing but how we are going to write the test cases either in the excel or in the bdd format okay so this is the uh, newest approach which is available in the market so nowadays the majority of the project are following the bdd so in the further session like we will be discussing about the bdd in detail okay so likewise so whenever the user story is given to us like we need to understand the user story and if you have any other doubt 
so you should always reach to the business analyst so we should not check with the developers so for any clarification so the first and foremost person so we need to reach out is like we need to check with the business analyst and we need to clarify all our doubts and we need to derive all possible scenarios okay so now i had an application in my hand so like so I, i was able to easily derive the all possible scenarios but uh, <clears throat> when we are working in the real time so for sure like we won't have that specific functionality in the uh, web page right because that is under construction so just the developer has developed the uh, just the developer has begin the development activities so during that time so we should think logically and we need to derive all possible scenarios so while deriving all possible scenarios so we should go in a flow so you should not uh, uh, jump uh, jump um, uh, for example like uh, you should not uh, do the random jump so what is mean by random jump so let me just uh, uh, take a pen as an example okay so let's take a ballpoint pen so when we say ballpoint pen let me open the image of the ballpoint pen so assume that like uh, we are going to develop the ballpoint pen and after developing this uh, ballpoint pen so we are going to do the testing so which means while they are developing this ballpoint pen so we need to derive all possible scenarios and what are the all possible scenarios we can derive so the first scenario so we should derive is like so we should focus upon the functional validation and then we need to focus upon the ui validation so the functional validation is nothing but like you may assume that uh, like uh, we can check whether the uh, pen is writing smoothly or not so that is the functional validation that is the key functional validation so which always strikes in our mind but i i told so we should go in a flow so we should not uh, uh, jump to the key functionality straight away so we should verify step by step so step by step in the sense so the initial validation so like how we are going to write so initially we are going to open the cap of the pen so we should verify so whether the cap fit with the body okay so we need to verify the whether the cap is fitting with the body okay if that is fine so then we will be opening the pen and uh, we will be hold the pen so while holding the pen you could see there is a grip is there so we can check whether the grip is present and how uh, grip the uh, material is so you can verify it okay and pause that like we are going in the flow so then we started to write so before writing so if you notice at uh, like everywhere the edge of the pen is like somewhat tapper so we should verify so whether we are having the tapper at the end so one and only if it is uh, tapered so it is easy for us to write so if it is like kind of an square or if it is kind of an uh, rectangle shape so then we can't uh, uh, hold and write hold and write so that's the reason like we need to check whether it is tapered or not and when it is of a new pan always like uh, they will be cover the uh, tip with some rubber so we can verify so whether the uh, tip is protected with the rubber or not and then like we may have the uh, requirement so in the requirement they will be specifying so what is the thickness of the uh, tip so like you may see like uh, at the top they have mentioned like 0.7 mm so we either it can be like 0.5 mm or 0.7 mm so we need to verify the size of the tip so if in the user story if they have mentioned the 0.7 mm it should be 0.7 mm or else if it is of 0.5 it should be like 0.5 mm okay so we should verify the thickness of the tip okay so then like we will be start writing but before start writing so i told we should go in a flow so which means like we need to check the ink level so ink level as well as like the size of the uh, refill so if you observe like whenever like uh, we purchase any of the new pen uh, 
so they there will be always some gel is present at the end and there will be some back end space so let's assume so the size of the ripple is like kind of in 10 cm and in which like they will be fill the ink for 8 cm and some gel will be present in uh, present for 1 cm and we will be having the back end space for 1 cm so this is how they will be uh, level up the ink and we need to verify so whether it is correct or not okay and then like you can verify so what is the color of the ink so as per requirement so you need to check so whether it is a blue color or the black color or the red color so now if in and around validation is done so then we will be focusing upon the key functionality so then we need to start writing and we need to check the smoothness of the pen so how the we need to check the smoothness of the pen so which is nothing but like we can check so how smooth the uh, flow is okay so which means like we need to go flow by flow okay the, which is nothing but we should go step by step and finally like you can focus upon the ui validation so ui validation in the sense you can check the uh, like uh, what is the color of the cap and uh, what is the label name which is printed so which is nothing but the brand name either the it's hello or renalds etc then we will be focusing upon the ui validation so initially like we need to focus upon the functional validation and then like we should focus upon the ui validation so we should always consider both functional as well as the ui validation so whenever we are doing the test design so we should consider the two types of validation so even like if we take the login page as i told so the key functionality is like uh, we need to verify whether the user is able to log in successfully or not or if it is of an invalid login we need to verify so like whether uh, the appropriate error message is thrown or not but before validating the key functionality so we should check how the username text box is working how the password text box is working so if this particular things are working fine then obviously technically so the key functionality will work so that is the reason i told so whenever like we are deriving any of the test scenario so we should go in a flow so we should not uh, uh, like act like a monkey so we should not jump from one place to other place so we should go in a flow so that is what i am repeating again so whenever you are going to verify something or you are whenever you going to do the test design so start from the beginning so don't straight away jump to the key functionality so before verifying the key functionality so validate the surrounding areas so in order to validate the surrounding areas so derive all possible scenarios okay so that is what i told so the first step is like we need to understand the user story and then like we need to derive all possible scenarios so in the further session like i will be showing like uh, how the requirement will be uh, look like so this is kind of an uh, uh, non technical discussion or like even if we take a one more example so let's take a, a example of an ceiling fan okay so when we take a ceiling fan so what are the key things we can validate as i told so we should go in a flow so go in a flow in the sense so first we need to verify so whether the three blades are present because like uh, either as per requirement so the fan can contain either the three blades or four blade four blades we need to verify the number of blades if you are okay with the number of the blades then we need to verify the size so which is nothing but so everything should be of an equal length because one and only if it is of an equal length so like uh, the winds the speed uh, the wind circulation inside the room will be perfect if it is not equal length the length let's assume like one is like 5 cm and one blade is like 20 cm another is like 30 cm if there is of an irregular length so then again what happened so it is not going to work so that is what i told so we should not jump to the key functionality so the key functionality in the sense everyone observe like so whether uh, we are getting the uh, adequate air from the fan but in order to verify the key functionality so we should verify the surrounding things because only the if if the surrounding things are working as expected so the key functionality will work as expected okay so then 
this uh, further thing so like uh, if you have established the connection so we can just check the basic thing so like uh, if we turn on the switch whether the fan is rotating and if we turn off the switch whether uh, the turn uh, the fan is like uh, uh, winding up so we can verify that and then when we take a functional validation so how in which direction the fan will rotate obviously the fan will be rotating in the clockwise so even this is a functional validation so we need to verify in which direction the fan is rotating and uh, so we may have the regulator and based upon the regulator like we are going to control the speed of the fan okay so with the regulator we are going to control the speed of the fan so like for example if you have an uh, five different speed then we need to verify so if you point to the uh, number one so how fast the fan is rotating and if you point to the number five so how fast the fan is rotating and even the fan will have the uh, maximum rpm okay so the maximum rpm and it will have the minimum rpm so rpm is nothing but it's a rotation per minute so like if you set in uh, the speed level to 5.5 so it should rotate in the maximum rpm so we need to verify so what is the, whether it is rotating in the maximum rpm or, or not so those things they will be mentioning in the uh, requirement document and based on that like we need to verify it and what is the minimum rpm so everything so whatever we need to verify so everything will be specified in detail in the user story okay so then what is the other validation we can do so then you can uh, like uh, validate uh, uh, what is the stability of the span uh, fan so which is nothing but so how long the fan can uh, rotate so can it rotate continuously for 10 hours can it rotates continuously for 20 hours so likewise you can validate the functionality and when we take the ui validation so we can say the color of the fan so what is the color of the fan this we call it as an ui validation so whenever you are analyzing any of the user story so we should consider the functional validation as well as like we should consider the ui validation so likewise uh, let's take one more product so for better understanding so let's take a chair as an example so if you take a chair as an example so what is the uh, key validation we used to do so like we can say like uh, whenever we uh, sit on the chair so it should be comfort that is the key validation but i told so before validating validating a key thing so we should go in a flow so go in the flow in the sense like we can verify so whether the four legs are present and all four legs should be in equal size and then like you can verify the uh, material of the chair and then like you can do some load testing so how much weight uh, the particular chair will withstand so like let's say like maximum so we can keep the load of an 100 kg so in the requirement they will be specifying so what is the minimum load and what is the maximum load the chair can withstand and then like we can check so whether uh, how comfort is like how the backrest is and then like you can verify the ui validation what is the color of the chair etc so likewise so for each and everything so we should consider the functional validation as well as the ui validation so in the upcoming session so like we are going to analyze the respective user story and we are going to do the split up so what is the functional validation and what is the ui validation and in day-to-day -day market so the expectation is like so not only the manual testing it's also an automation testing and we are going to automate the functional validation so in the real time so everywhere they will be automating only the functional validation because the functionality should work as expected so whenever the functional validation fails it is going to create a loss to the business so we should focus upon the functional validation rather than the ui validation okay so even right so when we take the ui validation if the username is appearing in the different color it is not going to create the loss to the business and if i take the uh, amazon dot in and here i'm going to verify the search functionality and even right let's take an example like you the developer is going to develop the search functionality so what are the maximum possible scenarios you will be consider 
so like uh, the first thing is like you may check so whether the user able to inject the respective keyword but whenever we click on the search bar so by default it is providing some suggestion so as i told we should go in a flow so we should check whether keep shopping for is appearing or not so this is the first test case you need to derive and then like whenever we inject any of the keyword so let's say if i type an iphone okay so whatever the product which start with the ip it is getting suggested so we should verify so whether we are getting the auto suggestion either we can select from the auto suggestion or else like we can type uh, the full uh, either we can type fully okay and after typing fully if you click on search button so based upon the keyword it should retrieve the result and other thing is like near to the search functionality like we are having some drop down so where we can select the category so when i select the category as baby and if i inject any of the keyword it should suggest me the product related to the baby if i say select the computer and if i provide the keywords it should provide me the search result related to the computer accessories so which means like the functionalities are interrelated so that is what i told so we should consider all possible scenarios so when i say search functionality you should not focus only on one thing so whether we are able to search the product successfully or not so that is not a key thing so it has an other interdependent functionality so we should consider everything so that is what i am repeating again so whenever we are doing the test design so we should cover all possible scenarios okay so like um, in the further session i will explain how the requirement will uh, look like i will take any one of the sample requirement and i will go through the requirement line by line and uh, let's derive all possible scenarios and pose that like we can do with the actual process so let's do the test design in a tradition as well as the modern approach as well as like everything will be maintained in the project management tool and even like i will explain the agile process inside the project management tool so what are the different types of uh, calls uh, we have learned so how they will progress the learn and how they are going to monitor the uh, status how the scrum call will happen where the user story will be placed and uh, how we will get to know so whether the developer has completed the development activity and what should we do post completing the testing activity or what should we do post completing the test design activity so likewise there are n number of process involved so we are going to compare like each and every process with the project management tool called as an jira okay so that is the agenda of the upcoming session so till this point uh, do you have any doubt